Hey guys, Surgeon General here, and you're watching the next installment of Kositi, a career goal series. And what I love about this series is that I can talk to people from all over who are on unique, non-traditional career paths, showing you that it is possible to do what you love. Here with me today is a new wave indie rock band from California. Please welcome Pretty. Thank you guys for doing this. I'm actually really excited because yeah, I am a fan you. of your work. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, man. Likewise. Thanks for having us. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Likewise. We love your shit. And I know that there's two other band members who aren't of Balkan descent, but yeah. we still want to represent them anyway. For sure. Uh, We'd like to give a shout out to Connor on drums, Connor Bond, and, and uh, Felipe Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we rebaptized them. <laughs> well, first of all, a lot of people follow me every single day and sometimes I don't notice a lot of people Then I'm just like, oh, okay, like who's this person? Because like the name, I'm just like pretty, no first and last name, right? And I went into your guys' page, I'm just like, okay, you guys are a band. But really, my focus went right to you, Mihailo, because of your hair. Your hair was the hook, the band was the anchor. <laughs> because I saw, I, I saw your look and then I'm just like, okay, you got my attention. Now, what do you have to offer? Yeah. And it's delivered because I am now a fan. Thank That's you. awesome. For sure. I'm glad, I'm glad the hair was able to do some good. For sure. <laughs> uh huh. That's right. I'm assuming you guys are connected in some sort of way. And I've been told that you, some of you are family or all of you are family. I can't remember. Uh, we're, we're all family. So me and Tupli are brothers. And then <laughs> Mahalo's my brother from a different mother. <laughs> my uh my dad me and Toby's dad and his mom are brother and sister yeah so we're first cousins the three of us wow so who came up with the idea to start a band did you guys all play instruments and thought like hey let's create something or how did it all start um uh, okay. was always in bands growing up like he was a musician guy uh me and Tupley were like the soccer stars uh we were uh, oh, playing soccer whole lives and the whole thing of us coming together like yeah I was in like my bands and stuff throughout my years but as these guys were playing soccer they never like picked up any instruments or before they weren't really musical mm -hmm. before this group started like uh Milish did some Mil Milish had some stuff going on like he was in a <laughs> critically acclaimed rap group <laughs> oh in my school. <laughs> Change of genre, I see. <laughs> like, I yeah, was no, but... writing, like uh, poems and, and, and songs and stuff, but I didn't mm -hmm. play any musical instruments. So I was like, I'll just rap with like my friend because he makes beats. Nice. Like, I don't have to do, like, I don't have to be responsible for the music. Just like, give me a track and I'll like, like rap over it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I was doing that before. I mean, me and Tuckley always like, we're really into music because of our oh, yeah, we're big stuff. music. Like, like nice. you know, everything about music. All, like all genres like whatever it is um but like we just never like i would always pick up guitar for a summer and get frustrated and put it down like it was just like a process of trying to learn the guitar same here my dad's like he got yeah. me a guitar and i can only play it on one string so he returned it <laughs> from this the moment that it happened for me is like we were all together in their like bedroom that they shared at the time like a mm -hmm. couple years ago and millish had like a cracked version of logic or something and we were messing with like keyboard sounds, Tupley was, and he came up with this little melody on the keyboards. I'm like, oh wait, that, what's that? That's cool. And it started out with that. And then I picked up a little guitar riff and it came really naturally and it did bass and stuff with that. And then Millish, I'm like, I know you could write lyrics. So he, he came up with like a melody and lyrics and stuff. And it was the, the motion, that's what came of it. And that was like the first song we ever wrote we released that as our last single before this current one and it was just like that was the moment for me where i'm like damn maybe this could actually turn into something cool nice and and these guys had like minimal minimal musical experience mm -hmm. and like after that i'm just like okay we could probably we could no, probably no, do that's this not, that's not entirely yeah, after, after that moment we tried so millish especially yeah I would, especially I would, millish, I would, you try I, to I, yeah i was like i was pissed because i was like i was always trying to hit up my highlight like yo like but come over, let's start, let's, let's start a band, let's start making music. Because he was in a, he was in a band. Um, oh, yeah, I was in a band at the time. You're in the Bulls. And I was like, like, dude, let's jam. Let's do this. Like, oh, okay. And, like, he just never gave me the time of day. Um, 
<laughs> which was annoying. It's pissing. I was like, bro, you're maybe the high hat. Like, what the heck? Like, you're gonna choose this guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to show him you you were serious. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. What made you like take us seriously? I mean, I get it. Maybe it was maybe it was that song though that uh. I don't know, maybe we just started doing it more and more, like getting together and trying to, you know, come up with stuff. It's like, what's what's a better thing to be in a band with like your brothers, though? Like totally. These, yeah. They're, yeah, that's how it is. So it worked out perfectly. When I first heard your music, I honestly thought it was refreshing because I'm obsessed with like the 80s and like the 90s because I've grown up in the 90s and stuff like that. And all this gar- <laughs> like the music that's out there right now is really trash. So it was <laughs> definitely refreshing to kind of transport to those eras and also hear different sounds that you don't necessarily hear every day. Like it was so weird this past weekend. I went to the mall and subconsciously I was singing, take it easy to myself. Damn. (laughs) And I didn't notice until I came home. I'm like, if I I can't get out of my head, then you guys got something, right? Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Who are some of your creative influences or favorite bands, artists, like, and did they sort of morph like your music into what it is today? Uh, Mm -hmm. Lyrically, like my influence are like Tom York and Lou Reed and Alex Turner, Mm -hmm. um, like those kind of people. But that's like, you can tell like that's not the type of music that we really make. Mm -hmm. Takashi 69. Yeah, Takashi. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Takashi. Leave him out of this. <laughs> uh, like, musically, like eighties, like 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 yourself, like mm-hmm. like The Cure, uh, The Smiths, New mm-hmm. Order, In Excess, uh, The Clash is my favorite band. Like Radiohead. So like, I, we don't really make that kind of music. Or, I mean, the like, eighties music, we kind of try to make that kind of stuff in like twenty twenty one. Oh, totally. That's why I thought it was refreshing because we had. Yeah like fucking WAP, okay? Yeah. Like <laughs> shit like that. And there's not a lot of bands like this out now. You know, no. like what? Maroon 5? If you can even yeah. compare them. To yeah. the they're, sound. Like, they're, they're old too. Like they're from like the 2000s. No one's doing them. Yeah, like, true. Like everyone's making like bedroom pop, like Claro and I don't know. Like the, the rest, like it's very minimalistic. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like no one's doing there's no There's no big like, like stadium type bands anymore. Yeah. I haven't heard this type of music probably in at least 15 years. That's I'm just like, okay, I can dig this. It's refreshing. You stood out Thank a you. lot. Thanks, man. In, the, in a positive way. You guys have a new single out called In a Place, The Bends. I love the sound. Like I said, I'm a huge retro fan. I was trying to figure out what the bends really meant because when a girl gives you the bends, to me, it's like the, she kicks you in the balls and you're like healing over, like bending uh, over. Uh, the bends is uh, when you're nauseous from being underwater. Like, so like scuba divers uh, uh-huh. get the bends, uh, like a, when they go scuba diving, like typically. So like, I, don't know, I guess it's kind of a metaphor for like, I don't know, drowning, like but being sick, like you're currently drowning and you're getting like sick from it. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I just wanted to clarify that, especially for other people who we're going to be listening to it who haven't yet. They might have the same question too, because the bends to one person might not be the bends to another. So I just want to clarify that for everybody. Everyone's like, that's the first question. Like, yo, what's the bends? What's the, like, I guess it's not an uh, an American term. Like it's an, it's an English Mm -hmm. type of, from like England, like English term. Yeah. How did you decide to call it in a place parentheses the bends because after listening to the song a few times i'm just like how come the song's not called that girl yeah yeah no right Bellish? oh <laughs> so i guess that was a debate <laughs> damn i, I didn't like mean to like trigger anybody <laughs> no we're just messing around there's a lot of there's a lot of songs called that girl mahalo <laughs> i guess it's fair enough in, in a place uh, in a place no one has that title or like the like, I don't know I like those more artistic kind of original yeah names. we're not a duo group so I think yeah. the title though now it's, it's way better than that so tell me a little bit more about the process of creating a song from start to finish uh, that's always fascinated me 
um, who com comes up with the melody, who comes up with the lyrics, who decides that's not right or that's right. Uh, let me hear from, uh, do you want to be called Topli or Toplitsa? I like Topli, I like, I prefer Toplitsa with the uh, people that can't, can't pronounce it. I'm cool with Topli. All right, because we're all <laughs> yeah, basically we're... family here now. Topli <laughs> it is. So if you could tell me sure. kind of like the process of creating a song from start to finish with you guys. Well, honestly, Mihailo sent in a track and then uh, a, a little demo. And he said, uh, guys, work on this or, or see what you guys can come up with. And and I came up with something, um, a whole uh, a song, if you want, if you want to say. But what I came up with on the keys was completely out of key. And my Milosh and Mahara were like, OK, um, it's really cool what you came up with, but just, you know, have it on its own. And I took away Mahalo's track and then I sent my track. And then uh, uh, Mahalo was like, holy shit, you know, we, we have something right here. Mm -hmm. And then a, a couple hours later, Mahalo sends the, 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 the track that uh, I sent, um, the mistake. Uh, he refurbished it and he turns my key, the main melody, the, the chorus, that, nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. that was originally a keyboard part. And Mahalo turned that into a guitar part, which sounded beautiful. That's because it was so electric and it, it drove the song. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, and I literally ran outside my house and I called Mahalo and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, dude, like, this is amazing. Like what you, what, what you refurbished this into. Like, and then he's like, why the fuck do you run this? out of your house? Go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, don't catch cold. If I, if, I yell, if I yell in my house, I get butt in there. Like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Trust me, I've Kaish. yelled in my house like so said that is pitch cutting matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're allowed to lock doors in your household, but I know no. in our household, if you lock the doors, you're up to things. Yeah. So you have nowhere to hide. Never. <laughs> That's why he runs outside because someone will see him get his ass beat and they'll call social services. We don't we don't yeah, even exactly. close the door in our house. You what? Yeah, we never close the door. We're not allowed to close the door in our house. Oh well, I, right now I have the door closed, and I'm just like waiting for someone to be like, "Shut up, these two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully they hear me loud. But yeah, luckily this, this one was 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 pretty easy. It was it was very easy. Um, but when you have something that everyone wants to work with mm -hmm. and everyone's excited to work uh, uh with, it, it's super easy. It's a great great process when mm -hmm. everyone's on board and and people are. You know, they they're excited uh, for what it can possibly be. So who decides like that's right, that's not right when it comes to like lyrics, let's say. I mean, I feel like it's easy to agree on a melody. Either it sounds good or it doesn't. But with mm -hmm. lyrics, mm -hmm. I feel like there could be a lot of cooks in the kitchen. It's actually, sorry, the opposite. Like like uh, lyrics, like it's it's on me for the, for the most part. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, they don't question my like my lyrical content. Oh, that's like easy. that's like pretty much like that's what I got hired for. You know, like <laughs> like that's my that's my thing. You know. No, but the cool thing, the good thing is like. I felt like it's harder to do that in like other bands. Hard to be up front, but since we're so close, you could just you could just be up front. And be like, man, I know you like you could come up with something better. For sure, for sure. So what do you think is the hardest part of being in a band? Is it creative conflicts, getting exposure, getting the music right? It's not the hardest part, but it's, it's really hard with five people and then three brothers. Like, I don't know, we're always, especially me and Tuckley are like hotheads. We have bad tempers, so we're always like going at each other. Like, my personality, which is like, yo, fuck PC shit. Like, I'll say whatever's on your mind. And we got like our drummer, Connor Bond, who's like the, the, the mother of the band. He's like, no, you can't say that. Like, so I was just like, <laughs> so basically, while you guys are fighting, the <laughs> other members of the band are just like, you know what? Call us when you're ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It, um, it also comes with the with culture, you know what I mean? Like with the... the, the oh, definitely. Tempers, we're always. hard heads. We're, we're, like talk, um, but we're yelling. aggressive. We talk with our hands. We don't care for your opinion <laughs> unless we ask for it. No, I got it. <laughs> for sure. You understand. <laughs> totally. So how did you guys get in touch with the other members? Were you guys friends? Yeah. So Felipe went to college with me. My uncle... Or my my streets, his he played football with um connor's dad back in canada and then we moved out here years later 
Mm-hmm. And then my Isla's mom saw like a Canadian, like a roots jacket. And then uh, I think one of them were like, yo, are you from Canada? And then they were like, yeah, where'd you grow up? Hamilton. And like, oh, no way. Like I'm from Hamilton. And then they're like, oh, do you know like the Petco's from there? And then she's like, yeah, that's my, uh, George Petco's my brother. He's like, no way. I played football with him. Like, so it's just, wow. It's just, small yeah. fucking world. Yeah. Like from <laughs> yeah, for real. To, like Burbank, California. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's insane. So outside of the band, do you guys still go to school? Do you guys have full-time jobs? Is being in the band kind of like a side thing? Or is it really something that you're all invested in? We're all we're all sort of invested in the band, like, full force at this point. Nice. And have, have been for, like, a while. This has been, like, my main thing for as long as I could remember, like, music. Like, I, I wanted to – I started playing guitar when I was, like, seven or eight, and I'm, like, 22 now, so – it's been <laughs> it's been a little while since I've sort of known this is what I wanted to do, you know. So mm-hmm. I've been trying to stick with it, and I felt like I felt like this was the first band where I was sort of like all in for. Like this is the first band that I wanted to actually record music and get like serious about, and we have to take this to however far we can take it. Like, totally, try totally. Here's the thing: nothing is safe anymore. When I know a lot of especially Belkin parents, they want to guide us to like, you know, being the lawyer, being the doctor, being the businessman and blah, blah, blah. But it's like 2020 has shown us that like, it doesn't even matter. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And life is too short. Do what you want to do because the time is now because later you might not have later. You can't get your time back, but you can get your money back. You know what I'm saying? Have you guys had the experience of your parents kind of talking you out of your dreams to become, you know, the traditional doctor, lawyer, businessman, and all that. Not like talking, Not really. Bubba, but like my, I'm always getting pressed about like, especially from like my Deda and Bubba and like my mom too, or like my, my dad, like just like, oh, uh, we went to law school, like like they had, like the, their goal is or like in life was for me to be like a lawyer, like yeah, because like, I, I, I talk and whatever, like I had like smart ass answers for everything. <laughs> always just like yo like start going to law school this and that but uh they're always like been super supportive supportive of like our like creative endeavors and like i think now that they know that we're, we're like making some noise with it and like uh they like they follow us that's amazing yeah, like our parents are artistic as well like my dad my dad was yeah. in a band back in the day like my mom's a writer their dad's an actor oh wow yeah so, so you just have like, like that creative bone and i guess it's just like the security though of like yo like uh, it'd be safer to go this route. Pretty much what I want to showcase to other people, especially with this series, Kosi Thi, is to showcase our people in different industries doing what they do to show that it's possible so people can get out of that funk of like living their parents' dreams but not their own. You know, you have to do what's going to make you happy, not your parents. Of course. And mm-hmm. don't let society guide you in the wrong direction. I know tons of people that like they didn't know what to do with their own lives and maybe didn't want to feed into their own dreams. So there's like, oh, my friends are going for medical. I'm going to do medical. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, that's, like, that's what I've noticed a lot, like too, with like this kind of generation, even my friends, they just like sort of follow what their parents are doing for the most part. It's like, oh, my my, my dad's into this thing. It's like, it, it'd be an easy in. It's like, it's not necessarily what I want to do, but you know, there's an in there and I, I could... You know, it'd be an easy job. Yeah. Well, at the same time, life is too short. Do you really want to live your life with regret that you woulda, coulda, shoulda, but you didn't? It's important that, like, as artists, uh, we we become the evidence for the kids that are kind of hiding in their bedrooms, afraid to, you know, tell their parents that, you know, I want to be a guitarist. It's very important that that we we have to be the evidence, so we can allow them to just follow whatever it is they're in love with and that's the main thing is you got to be in love with it and when you're truly in love with it you don't care what oh, anyone says you absolutely know? absolutely so what can we expect from you guys moving forward i heard you mentioned an ep yeah so we, we recorded a we recorded an ep a few months ago and we we just were getting all the bits and pieces together you know to be able to get it right and this is the first single coming from that and the EP's entitled Honey, It Was Paradise, and it should be coming very soon, hopefully. We're, we're looking for, like, late next month, so... Nice. That's We're doing that, and it's going to be, like, a two-parter. So we're going to do this, and 
another one, you know, at the end of the year as well, I think, or somewhere closer to the end of the year. I mean, I'm excited for you guys' future. I'm excited to hear more music from you guys. I'm loving the look, loving the feel, loving the sound, and I wish you guys the best of luck, honestly. Thank you, man. Likewise. Thank you.